All right, you guys, today we're going to be working on social studies. You will need your American Revolution 2 packet. And also in your bag this week, you got a worksheet that looks like this. We are going to walk through this worksheet for this video, so you will need a pencil. All right, so what we're going to be talking about today, we're on brief three, is the revolution continues. We're going to be talking about the important battles, and we're going to be writing them on our timeline. So on this timeline, or on this line right here, I want you to write battles of the American Revolution. Okay, if you need to see that, just pause it and then write it down. Okay, so we're going to be reading through brief three, and as we read through it, we'll be filling in our timeline. So let's start with brief three which is page 103 in your packet. So the focus of this brief is fighting between the British and the Continental Army continued until 1783. Many battles were fought during the American Revolution. Some were big and some were small. Some battles were won by the British, others were won by the Continental Army. The fighting between the British and the Continental Army began in 1775 and lasted until 1783. So this war lasted eight years. So battles of the American Revolution. This is the one we're going to put in our first box. So let me see if I can get that in there. Okay, so there you guys go while I'm reading it. Fort Ticonderago, I think I totally said that wrong, and Ethan Allen, 1775. An early victory came for the Continental Army at Fort Ticonderoga. This fort was a British fort located in New York. Ethan Allen was a Patriot soldier. He led a group of other soldiers from Vermont called the Green Mountain Boys. In May of 1775, they surprised the British soldiers. Hold on one second, I lost my place, sorry. They surprised the British soldiers at the fort. They captured the fort. The British fort was full of cannons. When the Continental Army captured the fort, they were also able to capture the cannons. So I just wrote when it took place up in our top box here, May of 1775, I wrote where the battle happened and then I put a star next to Continental Army because that's who won that battle, okay? So now we're gonna go to this next one, 1775. And this one is, I just wrote Boston because this battle happened in Boston. Okay, a Patriot Colonel named Henry Knox and his men brought the cannons that were captured at Fort Tigandagro to Boston. It was a hard job. Boston was nearly, nearly 300 miles away from the fort. The cannon was weighed over 100,000 pounds. Knox and his men had to pull the cannons over the snow. They used horses and oxen to help drag the weapons all the way to Boston. General George Washington put those cannons to good use. He placed them on the hills that surrounded the city of Boston and the harbor. He believed that he could frighten the British into leaving the city. His strategy worked. When the British saw all the cannons pointing in their direction, they left Boston. So again, I just put colonists push British out of Boston, or I just put push them out, and then I did that the Continental Army won because they now have Boston. Okay, let's go to this next one. The Battle of Trenton and George Washington, 1776. In December of 1776, the town of Trenton, New Jersey was occupied by mercenaries. Mercenaries are paid soldiers from one country who fight for another country. These mercenaries were from Germany. They were called Haitians. The British hired the Haitians to help them fight the Continental Army. Washington wanted to drive the Haitians out of Trenton. To do this, he and his men had to row across the Delaware River in boats. Washington and his men crossed the river in the middle of the night on December 25, 1776. It was freezing cold. There was a big snowstorm that evening. The river was full of ice and flows, and the water was rough. We have to turn our page. Washington's troops arrived in Trenton by about three in the morning. Make sure you guys can still see that. They surprised the Haitians. Washington and his men captured the town of Trenton. They took almost a thousand Haitian prisoners. So we write December of 1776, because that's when it took place. It was the Battle of Trenton. Mercenaries or Haitians from Germany and the Continental Army is the one that won that war, or that battle, not that war. I'm gonna put another piece of paper behind this little, no, it didn't do anything. Okay, so now we go down here to the Battle of Saratoga. Okay, in the autumn of 1770, almost 8,000 British soldiers sailed from Lake Champlain toward the Hudson River. 
John Burgoyne, a British soldier, had a plan. He believed that if he could get his troops along the Hudson River, then he could divide the United States into two. But the British were met by nearly 15,000 Continental soldiers. Two separate battles took place. They are known as the Battle of Saratoga. Almost 2,000 British soldiers were killed. General Burgoyne surrendered nearly 6,000 troops to the Continental Army. The Battle of Saratoga is an important battle. It is often called the turning point in the American Revolution. This is because the, con the victory of the Continental Army convinced the French Empire to help fight the British. So we won this battle, and because we won it, the French decided to be on our side, and they helped us fight the British. All right, let's go to the next one. 1781. Or actually, yeah. So on your packet, we're going to skip down to this middle section right here. We'll go back and read this in just a minute. I just want to finish our timeline first, so... 1781, the British surrender at Yorktown. Charles Cornwallis was a British general. In 17 of 81, he held his army of about 8,000, or he led his army of about 8,000 to Yorktown in Virginia. Yorktown is located along the Chesapeake Bay. When Washington heard about this, he came up with a plan. French troops would sail into the Chesapeake Bay. The Continental Army would approach on land. They would completely surround the British. In September of 1781, everything was in place. The Continental Army blasted the British with cannon fire. The British could not escape by sea because of the French ships in the bay. They could not escape by land because Washington's troops blocked the way. On October 19th, the British surrendered. The web revolution was won. Okay, so that's when we won the war was October 19th, 1781. But then, in 1783, the Treaty of Paris was signed. So Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and John Jay, along with David Hartley, a representative of King George III, signed the Treaty of Paris. The treaty marked the official end of the war. It also recognized America as an independent nation. Okay, so I'm going to hold this up here. Do, do, do. If you need to, pause the video and fill in the rest of your boxes. All right, so now we're gonna go back up to the contributions of many, and I'm just gonna read that to you guys, because I think it's important. African Americans in the Revolution. About 5,000 African Americans fought in the Continental Army. Some of these men were free blacks, others were slaves. Peter Salmon fought at the battles of Concord and Saratoga. It is said that he killed British Major Picarna at the Battle of Bunker Hill. James Armstead was a spy. He relayed important information to the Continental Army. This information helped the Continental Army win the Battle of Yorktown. Women in the American Revolution. Women were not allowed to fight in the Continental Army, but they still helped the cause. Phyllis Wheatley was an African-American writer who wrote and published many poems in the, sort of the, in the support of the American Revolution. Mary Ludwig Hayes brought pitchers of water to the men as they fought on the battlefield. She gave the nickname Molly Pitcher. Okay, so those are just some people who fought in the war. Now for the rest of your assignment, on the work, the document that tells you like all the assignments that you need to do for a week is a link to help you fill this out. So during the American Revolution is when our flag got created. That's when we decided that this was gonna be the flag. So we're gonna just talk about some flag etiquette. So I want you guys to look up information about flying the flag at hat staff, when to fly the flag, repair and disposal of flags, and then it gives you some things here. It says to read either the flag and patriotic decorations or the carrying of the flag section. You can pick which one and write three facts that you learned. On the bottom where it says number nine, print a picture of the American flag. What I want you to do instead is on the back is draw me a picture of the American flag. All right, let me know if you guys have any questions.